everybody else is purge. Um, I'm reminded of about, uh, I don't know, about two or three months ago, I recorded a video in the car like this. And I remember being I, I fired up. I don't remember why I was fired up. I was just, uh, I was animated. I was a mix between angry and excited, which is always a dangerous position to do a video in. And um, I, I was talking about money in comics and how the amount of money it would take to kind of rejuvenate this industry and to do good work and to actually get things moving is actually a very, very low bar. And uh, the video got kind of ranty and it got, uh, it was, it was just, uh, it was a lot of kind of crazy things. And I, I, you know, eventually I decided I'm going to just punt this. I deleted the video. I, I didn't bother to put it up. And uh, I kind of wish I would have, I guess. Um, it's, I rarely do that. I would say, it is, at this rate, with the amount of videos I produce, it's probably like 500 to 1 of the videos that get deleted. And some people can come in and, you know, troll me in the comments and say things like, you should delete more and everything else. But, I mean, th this is what it is. I mean, this this channel is what it is. Uh, I do not have 100,000 subs. I don't have a million subs. I'm not uh, picking up comic books and reading them to you panel by panel like a douchebag. Uh, to get a million subs and, and you know, have people subscribing so they can get out of paying for comics. That's not what I've tried to do. It is a stream of consciousness. Um, I should probably, I could take more effort with uh, all kinds of, uh, all kinds of things um, that uh, we could do. But um, the, the reason I'm, I'm getting into this right now is that m the money that it would take to to energize comics, to do what it needs to do, um, it's out there. And the proof point is when I did this original video, this was prior to Substack basically committing $30 million to funding a comics initiative. And reading the articles as this number has bubbled out proves uh, insane. Uh, first of all, like I said, I've talked to two of the recipients of the Substack bonus uh, the numbers that are being thrown out are absurd. They're not anywhere close to what people are getting. However, it is a lot of money that's being pumped into this system. It is, uh, it, when you're saying $30 million, uh, you, don't, you shouldn't consider that like $30 million is going to creators. People aren't just going out and like writing checks to Al Ewing saying, here's uh, half a million dollars, go nuts. They're not doing that. And the Substack model, for what it's worth, is not just free money. And this is the problem with comics in general, is the, the business, the economic sense is really poor by a lot of people who are in the industry. And, and the problem is not everyone needs to have an economics degree or a business uh, degree or anything like that, any kind of MBA. But what you do need is some basic kind of common sense about either, either it's either A or B, either A I either, well, maybe it's, okay, sorry, it's A or B or C. A is, I know the information already, I happen to have a business degree. That, that's probably 1% of people in comics right now. And no offense, but that's very few. And why would it be more than that? You're, you're in comics, you, you didn't go to business school. Like, why, why would you be doing any of this? So, uh, in fact, unfortunately, anyone who is going to business school and getting a degree and or has been in economics, they're not going into comics. They're going to do a very quick analysis to go, yeah, I would make more money just temping, you know, as a CFO for hire. That that's what I I would be doing. So that's that's what these people do. So option B is you have some self realization to say, I don't know anything about economics, but I'm going to find somebody who does, and I'm going to ask for their help or you know build a friendship or find somebody who loves comics but can't do it, and I'm going to you know trade. Uh, art or prints in return for some business advice, that's that's fine too. It's a perfectly reasonable, uh, and that's a good option. Most people in comics should take that option. Option C is the dummy option, and that's where basically you go, um, I'm in comics, I know what I'm doing, I, uh, I my ego prevents me from asking for help, I can only really tolerate people who are going to be sycophantically praising what I do, and if they're not doing that, then I don't have the I don't have the time of day for them. And that's that's unfortunately that's the majority of people in comics. And I, I say that very sarcastically, very negatively, and I don't necessarily mean it as a burn, but I can't tell you the amount of people who 
um, I have given, I've got me or others have given good advice like, hey, you should get a lawyer to look over that contract. Here's the name of a lawyer. This lawyer actually uh, will do the work at half rate because they're a fan of comics and they'll, they'll look at it for you for like $100 an hour, which is a really good amount for a lawyer to look over an employment agreement or a contract. You know, a really good lawyer just for what it's worth. If you happen to live in California or the Pacific Northwest or New York, is going to charge you three to four hundred dollars an hour to look at an employment agreement. That's what you would be paying if you have a really good lawyer who's not a friend or doing it for some other reason. But here's somebody who will charge you like a hundred, 150 bucks, and uh, they will take four or five hours and they they'll they'll treat you right and they'll help negotiate a good deal with some rights. And I can't tell you the amount of of people I have met, writers, artists who are like, I think I'll be okay with uh, Wikipedia. No, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a star. I, I, I've, I've heard this directly from one individual who uh, you all would recognize the name, who goes, uh, I'm a big name. The publisher's not going to screw me because I'm too big a name to get screwed, which is, is basically, you know, <laughs> I, 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 again, I talk to a lot of people. I know some of the people who negotiated the new deal that this guy got. And they, they fucked him, to put, to put it bluntly. They absolutely screwed him. And he's wandering around happy because they did the classic trick of uh, giving you some shiny upfront benefits that make it look very attractive and then absolutely screwing you on the back end and creating a million little entanglements to make sure you never actually get fully paid out on that contract. And it's like, well, that there you go. But comics in general is something that people are highly interested in. It's why I've had arguments with people who do the, uh, you know, black pill, um, you know, the comics are about to implode, comics are dying. Every business analysis you can do shows that comics are still hot as an IP. And no, not just because Marvel's putting out movies of them, because they're versatile. Because if you have a comic, somebody is getting paid. And here's here is the important thing to digest, especially if you're, Anybody in the creative field at all. Um, that, that reminds me, there's, there's a guy who's an incredible artist. I've had him on this channel before I need to call back. But anyway, um, it, it is comics have, when you think about your comic property, if you're making a comic, and this is, by the way, for what it's worth, this is one reason why a lot of the crowdfunding efforts are still not doing it right, because they're looking at it as a direct one-to-one -one relationship. I get a comic, I do a campaign, I get money, I deliver the campaign. That's the wrong way to think about it. And right now, you may be like, I've already got this under control. You don't. A lot of you do not. You should think about the comic as a hub. You are in the center of this hub, and your entertainment property can go in a million different directions. No, not just Netflix and movies. That's, that's one direction, but that's almost the longest shot direction possible. You should be thinking about how you take that property and how you get it, A, published and distributed on other platforms in other countries and other areas. Localization is dirt cheap unless you're doing it completely wrong. There is the option of different vehicles for your distribution, print, digital, hybrid of the two. There is uh, putting that IP and that property into anthologies. There's a lot of places, particularly inside of the U.S. and most heavily in Asia and South America, where they are desperate for anthology properties and they are funded. When you think about your comic and your property and where it's going, you should be thinking about who in the world could help fund this, take it, license it, do something about this that has deep pockets. A lot of people are raising at this point, billions with a B dollars into funding entertainment properties. And everybody makes a mistake of thinking, you know, oh, you're talking about streaming services, Netflix, something like that. No, I'm talking about literally absorbing the IP and doing something like that. And I see a ton of comic creators who get very horny and excited about the fact that they found an agent who's going to try and shop them into Hollywood. And I will tell you, that is the least likely option for you to get paid. Many licenses are dirt cheap. You can pick them up at, at pennies on the dollar. You can then turn around and even with amateur level work, sell them back at 10x the initial investment to the same person who licensed it to you for good money. This is a, a really easy scheme and it's not a new one. It's not, a, a, an, it's not an experimental one. Europe 
comics, people in Europe are doing this all the fucking time. And the fact that the U.S. completely ignores this particular opportunity is, is nuts. I, I think that the problem with comics is that people get locked into business models they know. And right now that's, I'm a creator, I'm writing a story. I'm an artist, I'm making art. I can take that art, I can sell that art. Cool, I'm happy with the amount of money I'm selling that art. I have a deal and maybe one of these deals gets picked up and I get an option on a movie. But here's the thing that everybody should be asking themselves, particularly the people who are on Substack. You should be asking yourself, hey, why is it that somebody would give me you know, $75,000, $80,000 plus insurance to do this project? Why would they do that? By the way, your Substack deal, and here, this is the important terms of the agreement, this is the, the thing you should be remembering, is when you get that contract and you get your $75,000, which is the amount of money that one of these big names got, they got seventy-five k. And they got a, uh, you know, they got uh, health insurance, and they got a basic benefits package. Not a great one, by the way. You get a better benefits package, frankly, working for um, Kinkos or AT and T. But whatever, I guess it's not Kinkos anymore. It's the FedEx store. But regardless, um, it's an okay benefits package. It's better than what Comics is offering, particularly for freelancers. All right, so you got this, and you got your seventy-five k. All right. Now, what they're going to do in return is for your first year of publishing comics, they, meaning Substack, is going to have, take 85% of your revenue. They're going to give you 15%. Why that split? That's what's called a recoupable. It's, it's where they're trying to earn back what they gave you in advance. Their, their plan is that you're going to make money in your first year in excess of that 75 k and so they're going to basically take the 75K out of that first year. But here's the part they don't tell you, because after the first year, it flips. After the first year, the content creator gets 90K, 90%, and Substack gets 10 All right, that's a much better deal, right? But there is no year two. There's no additional $75,000 going to the content creator. They're just getting 90% out of the subs. But what do we know about subs? What we know is that they atrophy, especially in this business. They do not grow and build over time. Typically speaking, what happens is why Disney Plus, it's why Marvel's doing their unlimited push right now, is that people will get excited and they will sign up in their first year. They will pay that money. They will get the uh, discount for the first year. They will then typically unsubscribe from several of these services in year two. Why do they do that? Well, a bunch of people, like what happens is, you know, Al Ewing and Jonathan Hickman and, and James Tinian and Scott Snyder, they all go over to Substack. And what happens is comic buyers through impulse purchases will go in, they'll buy subscriptions to all four. And maybe they do it monthly, maybe they do it yearly, who knows, they buy it and they get very excited because there's all this momentum. And then a year from now, what's going to happen is the content creators who are doing an amazing job and really fulfilling the value will retain their subscriptions, but many will drop. Basically, it's, it's called the umbrella effect where the top content creators will stop shielding the lower content creators. The lower content creators' subs will decline. There will be a basic cliff that happens after year one. They will get paid less. That's the 90% that the content creator will be working off of. Whereas a couple of people will be successful. Well, in theory, will be successful. There's no guarantee of that either. There is an absolute guarantee that many people will drop off. So that's what's basically going to play out with Substack. And the key here is that's, that's not the only option for how you can go make money and do content. If you are a creator, you have some rights, you have some things you can do, then absolutely you need to start thinking outside the box because right now the comic industry has trained everybody to think about it in this way. You got to have an agent. You want to maintain the rights. I mean, look at the stuff that like Tinian and others have posted coming out of Substack. Like I never in a million years dreamed I could retain the rights. You know what? That's actually not the best. That's not the game you should be playing for. Yes, of course you want rights, but financially that may not be in your best interest. And Ask any tech startup how that all works. There's rights and there's share. Those are two different things. And when you think about how to make money in this, 
I've watched content creators in Europe and in parts of Asia basically license something on the cheap, create a property, sell it back to the, the original owner at 10x, take their money, and rinse and repeat 50 times. They have done that, and it's been highly successful. And it's a hell of a lot more entertaining than whatever ego trip you get out of rights. I, granted, don't get me wrong. Having your own property, being able to do whatever you want with it is wonderful. However, the benefit that you're getting is that freedom. That freedom does not necessarily translate to finances. And one of the biggest mistakes people can make is they equate freedom of choice to financial benefit. Those two don't always go together. Sometimes financial benefit means not having freedom of choice. And sometimes freedom of choice means giving up some of that financial benefit. You can't equate those two together. My point in all this is there's a lot of ways to make money out of comics. There really are. The opportunity is wide open. The biggest stumbling block and hurdle people have to get through is, frankly, you know, they, uh, you're, you're trapped into a model of thinking that was designed and created not to benefit you, the creator. That has been a system that's worked out for a long time. And as long as you keep playing the exact same game, I mean, I'll, I'll ask this. Uh, there's a lot of people on Twitter indie comic creators who like to brag about their, that they have an agent and that agent is, is shopping their scripts around. These same people are asking if they can uh, sleep on your floor at cons, if they could like bum a ride off you from the cab at the hotel to the convention. You know, sanity check. Somebody who is saying, hey, can I sleep on the floor of your hotel room? That means their agent sucks. They're not getting they're they're not getting value out of that. That should be a giant red light to say maybe the way people are playing this game is dumb. Anyway, sorry for the uh, the brief thing. This is like a you know a little like micro rant on making money in comics. So you know there you go. Appeals to nobody. That's the problem with this video. Is there's like ten people who are like holy shit, he's opening my eyes, and then everybody else like noped out you know one minute into this. So. You know, for all the people who've already bailed from the video, hey, fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I respect everybody in the audience. Thanks for listening.